going to talk about in this video is the bow hand, the right hand. So this is really, really important. The truth is all the sound that you make on the instrument is created by the bow. It has nothing to do with the left hand. We tend to spend a lot of time thinking about the left hand, when in reality it's the right hand that needs a lot more time, energy, and effort. Um, it's really challenging to get the bow to be really comfortable and to move the way we need it to move. So it's, it's more important that we spend more time thinking about this hand than this hand. So the right hand, the bow hand itself, at the end of the day, if we check out the bow hand itself, it should look like a normal hand, actually. Like if we look at it, they're, they're really, if, you're, if you take your bow away and your hand has some weird, basically anything that requires you to hold your muscles in place, you're not actually holding the bow as well as you could be. Um, we really want it to be super relaxed. Now, when you practice your bow hold, you should always practice it upside down. Um, this is one big reason because when it's upside down, the pinky is free. It has no weight. And when you play on the violin, it should feel the same exact way. Your hand should feel like this when you play the violin. If it doesn't, or the viol. If it doesn't, that means you're actually holding your, your bow incorrectly. You're doing something incorrect that's causing the weight to be distributed incorrectly. So when I bounce my bow here, I'm feeling all the weight in my thumb and my first finger. I could easily wave with these three fingers. And truly, my thumb's doing very little work. I am not squeezing at all. I can actually tap the thumb. It wants to fall. I'm kind of using my first finger to cheat on there. But the truth is, if I was holding it this way, straight up and down, I could very easily tap my thumb. It would come right off. Um, the, the other fingers kind of just hold it with the, with the friction of your hand. But when we set our hand up, I'm just kind of taking my hand, chill, like totally relaxed. Okay, thumb a little bit bent. I'm going to lay the bow basically in this second knuckle here, in this big knuckle. Okay, right about there, maybe a little bit towards the tip. We don't want it up here. Okay, we want it right about there, right in that zone, in that general area. And it's going to lay sideways in the side of that finger. The thumb is going to sit right here in this little notch created between the frog and the grip. Okay, not in here. That's not where it goes. It goes right in there. And it's going to go kind of on the tip of the thumb. My thumb's not going to stick through. If you look here, sorry, i got to get the right angle. If you look here, my thumb is not sticking through. It's not, you can't, you don't see it sticking out past that it's actually against the stick pressing or not even pressing but anchoring on the inside of that stick then my first finger kind of curves around a little bit okay and there we go that's the basic these two fingers just lay over and the pinky sits on top on the tip it does not have to be on the screw it just has to be sitting there okay when i hold this bow straight up and down here without hitting my ceiling you can see it's nice relaxed now we don't want to practice it this way because when i practice this way now all the weights in the pinky Okay, now my pinky's doing a ton of work, and unless we feel really comfortable with our bow hand, we really don't want to be putting that kind of pressure on our pinky because it wouldn't be there. Usually the violin would be sitting here, right? It would be sitting there like that, and I could weigh into the violin, and I can easily play without that weight. When I play the violin, or the viola, I'm thinking weight from that first finger. I'm just leaning into my first finger, and that's how I press the string down. How I press the bow down, I mean. Okay, these other fingers are just there to help guide the bow. Then when I pull the bow, my wrist is going to open and close, basically. So if we look from this angle, you can see there's very little motion in my shoulder. My shoulder does very little. Right at the beginning of the bow, it starts. So shoulder, elbow, wrist. So I do shoulder, elbow, wrist, and as I come in, it goes wrist, elbow, shoulder. Okay, so it's kind of a three-part thing with your arm, but it's very little. Most of the time, we have way too much shoulder involved. It's mostly the elbow and the wrist, and depending on what part of the bow you're in, it's more or less of one of those factors. Okay, so if I'm at the tip, I'm literally just using my, my wrist. Right, and if I'm in the middle, it's more of my elbow. Okay, and if I'm at the frog, it's a little bit more of my shoulder, but not very much see me using my shoulder a little more so it's important that we balance those three things in our arm and we're not using too much of one thing most of the time our problem is we don't have a loose wrist you got to relax that wrist you have to have a nice curved bow hand and the wrist is allowed to bend okay if you lock this there's no way to get a parallel bow if i lock my wrist that's how it looks and we do not want it to look like that so make sure you release this wrist elbow everything needs to be able to bend and move freely